Hey everyone, this last week finally saw the Conservative Party call for a vote of no confidence and the Prime Minister performed an art of escapology akin to what you'd normally see in Las Vegas to the extent that I could now see him choosing to replace Larry the Cat with two large white tigers. Under the terms of the Conservative Party's system, it means it's now safe in the job for another year, but for most onlookers it was a bit like seeing an old car where one of the doors is a different colour somehow scraped past an MOT. And for the sake of metaphorical accuracy, let's make that car an old Vauxhall Cavalier, what with the word Cavalier pretty much describing what went on, but also allowing a nice link to Charles I Cavalier's roundheads and the whole topic of regicide and removing leaders. The Conservative Party is quite keen on removing leaders as hobbies go, and it seems to have a leadership election every couple of years in the same way that you or I might decide to buy a new laptop. In both cases it's just easier to get a new one than fix the old one, especially when it's been permanently damaged by an accident involving some wine. The Labour Party, in contrast, has a system where it's almost impossible to successfully challenge an incumbent leader. They tend to hang around until after they lose an election, sometimes longer, which is possibly why Tony Blair remains the last leader to have actually won the many elections since Harold Wilson back in 1974. That's such a long time ago that Dominic Raab was only three days old at the time of that election, and Rishi Sunak hadn't even been born yet, although he was perhaps already being listed as a company director in the books in order to hide some overseas earnings for somebody. Anyway, back to Boris. Nearly 40% of his MPs voted against him, although it's genuinely hard to tell whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. The last Conservative leader to be successfully removed was Ian Duncan Smith, who was supported by the grassroots members, all while the MPs voted for Ken Clark. Many forget that Theresa May actually survived her leadership challenge. She was eventually forced to resign after the three meaningful votes on Brexit's nonsense, a trilogy of voting that's probably up there with the Hobbit trilogy in terms of being a complete waste of everyone's time. Comparisons could be made to Thatcher, but at this point, why? What's the point? We are where we are, and I would probably rather have Boris in charge for the simple reason that, unlike many others in Parliament, he's no intention of dealing with Ukraine by placing the British Army under the command of a joint EU defence force. He also isn't going to push for a vote on Irish unification under the guise of Brussels rules, simply because a journalist mentioned it on Facebook. Finally, quite frankly, he's still a better electoral offering than anyone else on his side, let alone what the Labour Party has to offer. If you know, Boris is a Vauxhall Cavalier, he's still a better car to drive than a Kia Starmer. Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, click subscribe.